Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Joe Accardi, and you're the owner of the Green Smoothie Bar here, and we're at the uh, James Street North location right now. And That's we right. say that because you are expanding yeah. by the minute, <laughs> because <laughs> everybody wants this. <laughs> Right, so congratulations. It's been a good year, yeah. This is good. Okay, so why why did you open this originally? Probably usually it's out of necessity and need for something when what with people, right? Yeah, I think I think there's two there's two big reasons why I opened up. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was actually my father. Growing up, he was um, he he was a farmer growing up, and mm -hmm. he ate a lot of fruits and vegetables and whatever. But that's good influence. Uh, as as I was growing up, I couldn't really keep up with the diet. I mean, you have like Fritos and Chips Ahoy, and if you go to the convenience <laughs> store or if you go to university. Yeah. You don't see stuff that I saw my dad eating, so That's right. it was very easy for me to fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, you know, some some interesting um, food started coming in my life, mm -hmm. and uh, and there was a group of people that uh, really helped me influence it. And when I saw that how easy making uh, a smoothie was, I said I can eat like my father, yep. but I can still live like a Gen Y person. Sure, exactly. And yeah. that's what makes it, and again, it's made it easier for all of us who just want to go and get a really, a, just a, a cup of healthy, right? You know, and that's the great part about it. Um, when we call it a green smoothie, or all of your smoothies have greens in them, right? Every Pretty much? Every, every <laughs> single one, yeah. yeah. So we, we start, that's what we say first. We say we start mm -hmm. with a base of kale and spinach, mm -hmm. and then from there we add flavor profile to make the kale and spinach kind of go away for a second. Yes, <laughs> but that's amazing it, <laughs> though, right? Because it's exactly. true, because it, a lot of people think they can't even imagine having that, drinking that. Like people who don't drink smoothies, um, you know, or they're making their own at home, they're not putting, so a lot of people aren't putting greens in it because they're afraid that it's just going to ruin everything about the taste. But as you say, you're building a, a flavor profile beyond that that just makes it taste awesome. Exactly, and and kids love when you call it the Hulk drink or something sure. that's not spinach. Yes. So spinach is kind of like, eh. But as soon as you say uh, it's the Hulk drink or something like yeah, that, they're they have all over no, it. no problem. Yeah, you can have a whole no list problem. of superhero drinks, right? And the kids <laughs> will be all about it. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. You have these things called kickers. So we obviously know you have a variety of smoothies, and but they're, the kickers are really the next sort of the, you, to bump it up another level. And you have a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are they? So I think a kickers, kickers fall into two categories. I mean, one, things have to taste great. Yes. So you have things that are adding to the profile for food. I mean, macadamia nuts or, mm -hmm. or um, pecans. And the other side of it is that you have uh, you come to have a smoothie for one particular reason or another. Right. Sometimes you want an immune boost. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, you might be looking for a protein blast because you just went to work out. Right. Other times you want to feel full and you don't want to have a full meal. Like that's going to be maybe your lunch today. It might be your lunch. Right. So you might want to feel really full and really right. satisfied. So we have different kickers and every single one of those kind of follows that, that category that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So you have a few, for example, here that some of them are really interesting and have some cool sort of background to them because they've been around for a really long time. Yeah, really cool. So I guess Mac has a, got an interesting story. This is from uh, South uh, America. Mm -hmm. And historically, during the Aztec time, uh, this was such a powerful stimulant that they used to give it to all their warriors before <laughs> battle. That's so cool. And, and, and you see that. If you have some maca, you'll get a, a definitely a little boost. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so powerful, they believed that they had to take it away from the warriors afterwards or else they'd be too rowdy. <laughs> so, so, so you're only allowed to have it before we need to put the pressure on you to go out Exactly, and yeah. So in, in, in small doses. That's so so that, one's, that one's a, a special one for energy boost. Okay. And what's this one? Oh, this, that's actually coconut milk. This Where's is the coconut here milk here. Let's go over to... Okay, actually, this is interesting because this is another green, basically another green for people, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is, um, so that, that comes, that's a, it's an algae, mm -hmm. and it, it comes from fresh water. Mm -hmm. And why it's unique is because it is one of the most nutrient-dense foods in the world. That, and along with the one next to it, which right. is spirulina, right. which is from salt water, mm -hmm. um, they are together some of the most nutrient-dense foods in the world. Wow. And the reason for that is because they're one of the original forms of life, believe it or not. Oh my and um, so some, some one, one of the questions is, you know, well, where do, where do vegans get protein or where do vegetarians right. get protein? a lot of people have questions about that. Spirulina is 70% protein. See, and no one would ever think that. You would never think that. There's, there's, yeah. It's tough to find, you know, animal products that are that high in protein. But yes. it's just, it's just, it's, it's a bit about discovery. It's a bit about going sure. forward and you can, and you can see what is there. On top of the protein content, mm -hmm. like I said, it's, it's, you know, spinach is the most nutrient, one of the most nutrient dense leafy greens. Mm -hmm. And that is even topping spinach in terms wow. of nutrient density. And that's the thing that when people come in there, you have a, a series of chalkboards and you have all these different, uh, the kickers and, and what, you know, the meaning behind them. But again, people would still be confused of what to, so you guys, I know, look at the background. <laughs> you have right you could basically you probably have people asking you a million questions when they come in here sometimes because there are a lot of questions to be had right it's what should true. I put in here and again this time of year you know as we're in you know November going into December that the winter months where people are not 
feeling great and often pick up little colds here and there. Again, we were talking about Im immune boosting and what would you suggest for, you would throw into someone's smoothie if they were really looking for trying to kick a little bit of a cold I think or keep a cold? Be besides having a very balanced diet and having lots of fruits and vegetables yeah. and phytonutrients in general because there are so many of them out there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, having a lot of nutrient dense foods is a great start like the spirulina and the corolla. Uh, there's two in particular that, that uh, we would go for, mm -hmm. and that is zinc and vitamin C. Okay. And those two things are found in a whole bunch of things. One of, mm -hmm. one of, the, um, one of the great things about spinach and kale is that vitamin C is actually very plentiful in both those things. Okay. So you're off to a good start. Yep. But if you want to go in further, the spirulina and the coelho will, will be a helpful uh, hit. But also if you want to go into the zinc content, then you have the chia seeds over there, mm -hmm. or also pumpkin seeds. If you want something a little more familiar, oh, yeah, pumpkin, seeds are good. pumpkin seeds very high in zinc, mm -hmm. um, which not only help reduce um, reduce the chance of getting a cold, but also help speed you up in, in case you have a cold. Mm -hmm. So kind of like that cold medicine that yeah. midway through you can feel it. If you can up your dose of, of one of those two, then mm -hmm. um, you should have a, a result of a shorter cold. Now you're actually going to make a smoothie for us today. What, what, what yeah. is this one? This one is uh, is one of our favorites and one of our most popular ones. It's. Uh, very simple ingredients, very fragrant, very, um, um, very, very, very fruity, but mm -hmm. but awesome taste. So I mean, yep. um, one of my favorites as well. It's uh, it's pineapple coconut, okay. and it's kind of influenced behind the pina colada, sure. which uh, many people have tried. Yeah, just and, a really uh, healthy version of it. <laughs> and yeah, and, and there's there's a uh, all wholesome ingredients. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna start with here. So okay. I guess the first thing, if you can hand uh, over the ice, the I think. Ice, sure. The one thing that we find with smoothies is that the actual more ice that you put into it. It actually heightens the sweetness, so it's kind of like a free kind of way to kind of get it a little oh, really? bit sweeter. Okay. That's good to uh, then we're gonna add some some uh, pineapple here. So this pineapple we we chop up, uh, organic pineapple, and we just uh, freeze it and we put wow. it in so the, there. Okay. And this is a kale and spinach blend. So we okay. have kale and spinach in here. Again, um, two of the most nutrient dense vegetables there are out there. Mm -hmm. Super awesome for you. And one other little tip is that we find uh, some people say, "Oh, I, I t make smoothies and they don't really taste like that." But one of one, <laughs> one of our one of our key secrets is that, um, in general, the less mature uh, a leafy uh, green is, the less bitter it's going to be, sure. and a little bit sweeter that it's going to okay. be. Okay. Okay. So I mean, um, you know, everyone had that really old, uh, mature spinach, yeah, and it's, it's really bitter to yep. the taste. Yep. That's what you don't want to put into a smoothie. There you go. So it's a good tip. As an added bonus, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or less mature spinach and kale actually more nutrient um, dense. Okay. So you get they get Ooh. the double one. So really, really All try right. and try and get the freshest, um, you know, okay. uh, baby kale and spinach as you can. Okay. So you put in a good scoop into that. All right, we have about 30 seconds one. left. Go, Sounds Joe, go. Good. <laughs> All right, so let's let's go here. So we have um, coconut milk in here, which coconut we make fresh milk. every day. Yum. And then the easy part here is just um, two Some more dates. I don't have my lid here, but dates. I'll just put it in there. Cool. Very good. And that's it. And magic of television. And then magic of television. <laughs> we made it. Let's and of course, go. it has a little bit of a, a green tinge to it because you got all that healthy stuff in there, but it actually tastes amazing. And look at that nice, healthy, vibrant, light green. I love it. Thanks, and Joe. Thanks for awesome. letting us come into your place. And of course, you have one up at the the airport as well, Hamilton Airport. Of course, as people are heading out of John C. Monroe sometime, they can grab a, a yeah. bento box and some yummy stuff and a drink. Thank you. Wicked. Good stuff. Keep Thank us you. healthy. That's it for now. We'll have more tarot in a bit. where color lives. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home. We're here in beautiful Westdale. I'm here with Tracy Higgins, and uh, you are the co-owner of Brian Prince Bookseller, yes, and uh, this uh, gorgeous bookstore here down in the in the west side of Hamilton. And uh, let's go back to '89 and talk a little bit about the history and how this all came to be. 
Sure. Brian Prince opened the store in 1989 mm -hmm. in February, so we are getting very close now to our 25th anniversary. Wow. <laughs> and when he opened the store, he always wanted it to be a community bookstore. He wanted to make sure that we, you know, knew the people in the neighborhood, responded to the reading habits and the reading tastes of the people in the neighborhood, and that we were able to bring authors mm -hmm. to the people of Hamilton. So we do lots of author events. We're involved in all kinds of community events. That's like, great. People yeah. love that. People love to connect and to meet. It, it's, exactly. it's like It's like a celebrity in its own right, right? Because again, <laughs> the talent behind that and someone reading a book, and especially if there's a particular author that you like to follow, that's, right. that's a treat for sure. Yeah, people love meeting the authors because a lot of times they don't realize how much time has gone into actually writing the book. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are amazed to find out that this book was 10 years in the writing. Sure. Or that someone researched for five years before they even started to write. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really neat for them to find out all of the backstory of right. the novel that the they've enjoyed. The inspiration behind right. why it was written and all of that. So I, yes. I, can, I can totally see that. And you're also situated in a great area being right here near McMaster University as well, right? Uh, it's, oh, it's good yes. reference material for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the students of all ages. Yes, exactly. Oh yeah, it's so nice because not only are we close to McMaster, but there are mm. schools on all sides of us. Yes. So yeah, our younger Absolutely. customers are great. And we get some of them who come in from a very early age and they yeah. want to climb on the ladders and well, get... of course. That would be my son right now. He'd be on your ladder right now. <laughs> it's great. It's always been a feature of the store. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, it's, again, it's la so nicely laid out and, and that's the best part. So let's talk, I mean, you were saying how, you know, Brian Prince really wanted to sort of appease to the community mm -hmm. and trying to follow you know what your local community and what they like and right. that's probably altered over the years I'm sure but some parts of it have stayed the same it has mm -hmm. and I think in general yeah reading tastes are there are so many things available and so many different people reading them mm -hmm. that it's hard to say that there is one thing that's popular all the time or right. that there's one thing that's dominant but in this neighborhood um, there are a lot of people who like nonfiction there are okay. a lot of people who are into cooking there are a lot of people who are into sports so but Yes, there are some things, fiction and mysteries mm -hmm. and, you know, history, all of those stay popular. And again, as you said, of course, you have children's books as well and quite, right. a, quite a few of them and, uh, and that's always nice. I know I just yes. am constantly buying books for my, my yeah. child. Right? That way, when they get older, they want to come here and, uh, and, and buy their own books. Yeah, they're voracious. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there are some who were born while I've been at the store and now I'm seeing them go to university, oh starting gosh. their own families. And that's so that's you know really... You've managed to keep that business intact for a while. Yeah, Good for you. And it's really nice because you get to see them grow up and you get to see them turn into adults and you sort of follow along and, mm -hmm. and you get to feel like you have an influence over their tastes their whole life. Sure, it's absolutely. Great. Well, let's talk about so. some of the tastes and, uh, you know, we're, we're now feel so off, off distance from the summer, but uh, what were some of the, the summer reads that maybe some people pass by that they can kind of so come and get right now? There were some fantastic books that came out over the summer. One of them was a Canadian novel called uh, The Painted Girls by Kathy Marie Buchanan. And this is a novel that's set in 19th century. Paris, which mm -hmm. a lot of us tend to think of as a very romantic place mm -hmm. and a very romantic time. Yes. But it's about three, it's based on the true story of three sisters who were ballet dancers, and one of them became the model for Degas' Little Dancer. And so it. it's about these girls who are born into a world of poverty mm -hmm. and the reality of the dancers and the, model, mo the art artists' models mm -hmm. and how they were trying to escape from this poverty, and it was virtually impossible in wow. a lot of instances. Oh, I would love to read that book, so, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sold me already. <laughs> so that was a really fantastic mm -hmm. novel, and it's by a Canadian author who wrote uh, The Day the Falls Stood Still, which was her oh, first yes. novel. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's what I was so. familiar with the name. All right. Yeah, and then some really great mysteries came out mm -hmm. over the summer. Uh, Linwood Barclay, who's from Burlington, Mm -hmm. And this is a new novel. It's sort of more psychological thriller than mystery. And it's about a man whose son uh, has died. And he becomes involved with a young woman. And he's trying to find out, you know, what happened to the son. And mm -hmm. at the same time, realizing he's put himself in a very bad situation. Oh, wow. Yes. And again, you were saying how we're moving into the winter, a lot of people <coughs> really start to crave those mysteries, right? Oh, they right? do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a great season. It always is in the winter for mm -hmm. mysteries. So going into the fall, as the nights get shorter, or the nights get longer, mm -hmm. the days get shorter, and everyone wants to curl up with something comfy. And that's one good thing, one good thing about being living where yeah. we are. We do have those, those seasons, yes. and uh, we know the winter season seems to be extra long. So yes. <laughs> 
It's always good to have quite a few good books on it hand, does. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and with mysteries, it's great because, mm -hmm. you know, you get to curl up, you've got a yep. crime, you solve the mystery, and yeah, it's all good to move go. on to the, next, to the one. next one. So let's talk a bit about some of the um, some of your bestsellers as well that, uh, you yeah. know, and some of always some of the books that moving into the new releases as we go right. into fall and winter and, and uh, again, just people just waiting, chomping at the yes. bit for that new book to come out. Well, one of the big ones, and it's very great for Hamilton is Lawrence Hill who will be familiar to a lot of viewers because his novel The Book of Negroes was mm -hmm. a bestseller all over the world. Yep. It's just done fantastic. And he has uh, been asked to do the new CBC Massey Lectures this year which is very prestigious. Absolutely. So this one is called Blood, the Stuff of Life. Mm -hmm. And he talks about um, blood which is common to all of us and we don't really think of it because it's just a, you know part of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But not only does it give us life but it influences and impact so many ways in which we lead our lives. It's influenced politics, it's influenced religion, it's influenced mm. our oh, family dynamics and social development. So yeah, he talks about all of those ways in which we never really consider this thing that you know flows through oh, everyone's that. veins. Yeah, great it's great. Idea. Great. This is actually a cool book here, 50 Canadians Who Changed the World. Nice to yes. read this and get a little information. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ken McGugan has written quite a few histories. Uh, he wrote one, How the Scots uh, Invented Canada. Oh, so, yes, because the Scots think they invented everything. Exactly. It's in my blood, so I love it. Everyone always thinks they yeah. made, they've invented the whole world. <laughs> yes, and that was a little contentious maybe for the right. Irish Canadian community. Sure. But, <laughs> but this one is about 50 Canadians from all walks of life cool. and how they not only influenced life here, but how mm -hmm. they've had you know, a lot of influence and impact in the world around us. Mm -hmm. So you get people like David Suzuki and Marshall McLuhan and Terry Fox. Yes. There are artists and comedians. There are all kinds of people in here with, some of them will be familiar and then there will be other ones that you start reading about them and you think, how did I never know How that this I person was so important? That's right. Actually, I did that when I flipped it open. I was like, oh, I now know. I want to read it. Okay, so because we have very little time left oh, and we sorry. can talk about <laughs> books for hours, I, I know. Um, obviously, we want to remind people again about children's books, so it's kind of nice to talk about yes. uh, this uh, Quebec author. Yes, mm -hmm. Marie-Louise Gay. Uh, she's written a whole series of books about Stella and her little brother Sam and mm -hmm. Sam is very inquisitive and so he always asks questions and mm -hmm. so in this one Stella's reading all of her books and Sam is always asking questions about well what about the sky, well what I about the it. rocks, well, what about the animals. Because it's how little kids think, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, it's, and it's just like the dynamic between a brother and sister where sometimes she just wants to read her book. Well <laughs> Tracy, it's so fun hanging out and talking to you because I really, I could talk to you for hours and yes. that's the best part is people can come into your store <laughs> well, and say, thank you. I need a book and I, I like this and and I, 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 you know, say you could just take them right to one of your many. You expanded and you've got a lot of books. Yes, and mm. yes, and there is no shortage of stuff this fall. I'm sure that anyone who enjoys reading will have no problem finding something good. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. It's a great space. Thank That's you. We'll be back with more. where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We're here in our Terra kitchen with Chef Ian and we're making a yummy pasta dish today. What are we making? Yeah, good morning friends. Uh, today we're going to make uh, a relatively easy five minute pasta meal. It's called puttanesca. Okay. Um, some wonderful rich origins it comes from uh, is in Italy. Uh, towards the end of the night, the restaurateurs, they open their back doors to mm -hmm. the people that you know, didn't necessarily have the means to eat, and mm -hmm. it's like all classic cuisine. They put together what they had at the time. Right, and that's how you come up with some of the coolest dishes sometimes, right? It's Where true. you just sort of start experimenting with some flavors, and as you 
say, just sort of leftovers. Exactly. All right. So we'll start off by a little olive oil in the pan, and to which we're going to add anchovies. Anchovies. Now, right anchovies. away, some people would get a little right bit freaked away. out, right? Because exactly. sometimes when you order a Caesar salad in a restaurant, anchovies, yeah. a lot of people will say, can you please remove those? <laughs> yep. But from this dish... It's, it's optional. Yeah. It's optional. Is it? Okay. If it's not your sort of cup of tea, you can certainly omit the anchovies. I think it just certainly. gives such a great flavor, though. It does. It's salty. It's, mm -hmm. it's, there's not, there's no meat component into right. the dish, so and this adds just a little bit. they're actually really good for you, too. They are. It's so, true. Lots of uh, essential oils. Mm -hmm. So, the uh, the what I've done mm -hmm. is I've added a little bit of garlic, a little bit of red chili flake, mm -hmm. and to which I'm going to add my tomato paste. It's about a tablespoon of tomato paste. This sauce is actually quite, it has quite a strong flavor to it, doesn't it? Quite an intense flavor um, versus some, say, you know, a marinara sauce or something that you're making that's very mellow. This yeah. has more of stronger salt, flavors. A little right. salty, briny, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So after that, we're going to add a can of one crushed tomato. Okay. There we go. And just bring it all together. And when you get home, this is something that you can start. Uh, you can walk away from periodically, mm -hmm. just come back from time to time. It really is a very easy, simple it's dish to sort of put together. And uh, yeah, really great impression. Looks good on the plate as well. So we're gonna let it reduce just a little bit. Okay. And as we go, uh, we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of capers. Capers are a pickled bud. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is going to add a little more of the salty flavor to it. Right. And again, some Kalamatra olives. Uh, wonderful. You can find them at, you know, your local supermarket. Um, I suggest straying away from maybe the canned olives. Go to the olive bar if they have one. Okay. Um, again, it's what you're putting in your dish. So if you're putting in nice quality olives, that flavor uh, is what's going to okay. come through, right? And you, those are basically just halved, right? You're yeah. Okay. All I've done is just before the segment is I've just pitted the olives. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some wonderful flavors coming out here. Some great smells as well. Mm -hmm. so and again, as you're saying, the, with the capers, anchovies, and the olives, that's going to add to the intensity of this of the flavor. So again, maybe maybe not for everyone, but I think everyone should try it because it's it's a different take on on pasta where people are used to more the mellow, cheesy flavors of well said. Sort of home cooking, well said. Right? So ultimately, uh, we are just going to bring it up the heat slightly uh, and just had it to reduce just a little bit, just let everything sort of meld together. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got your pasta sauce already underway. Wow, that's pretty good. And as you're saying, you, you know, a lot of this stuff you can just have on hand in your fridge and throw together a great pasta dish after work and a long day, and it's really not that labor intensive. No, it's intensive. not labor intensive okay. at all. Okay. Um, when we get into the pasta part of it, mm -hmm. um, talk about some fresh pasta as opposed to going down the aisle and you're you're pulling up the right. dry pasta. Okay, so why do you love fresh pasta more? What is it that you love about that? It's 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 all about the flavor. It's okay. it's all about um, it's a really fresh taste. It's 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 the flavor. It just the tastes better. Consistency is a little bit different too. Right? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some al dente. Mm -hmm. um, it tastes great. Okay. Um, so as opposed, like I said, opposed to going to the dry. Mm -hmm. And, and, and picking something yeah, off so the shelf. Yeah, so just branch out once in a while. Yeah. And, and as you say, you know, try to buy the fresh olives, try to buy, you know, yep. the fresh pasta. If I'm ever feeling adventuresome here on the show, maybe I'll get out a pasta machine and make some pasta one oh, day as I well. I always find people so, <laughs> it's the one thing that I always said, I'm like, that just seems crazy to make your own pasta, but so many people do it. It's it seems like just a lot a of work. Few ingredients in a hand crank, and you've All got right. pasta within a few minutes. Especially ravioli. <laughs> yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> I'm just adding the tiniest bit of salt okay. and just a tiniest little bit of pepper just to round the flavors out. Mm -hmm. And when the time comes, it'll be for pasta. Great. So you're just basically letting that simmer, let the flavors happen. So again, this would probably be even good if you had time on a, on a Sunday to make this and let the, I find with sauces is they really, the flavors kind of sort of melt together. The next day would be probably amazing, right? Great. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, slow and low. Yes. Just keep the, the heat down low. Mm -hmm. And um, as the time goes on, like the flavors will melt together and mm -hmm. you've got a much better pasta. Mm -hmm. Pasta okay. always tastes better the next day. It does, doesn't it? Like chili. It's true. Same thing. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about actually making your pasta. So what type of pasta are you using for, for this dish? For this dish, uh, I found a spaghettini, uh, just a nice spaghetti, mm -hmm. um, all, uh, fresh pasta, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, into okay. the water. Some tips about boiling your pasta to make it just right. 
First and foremost, when we talk about boiling uh, pasta, I want to make sure that it's a salty water. It's almost like a sea water. I didn't it's a don't briny do flavor. That. I don't I don't put enough salt in my water, so it's actually supposed to really have that like a clear salt water flavor right. to it. It's really the pasta is when it hits the water, it's going to pull in the salts and uh, it'll incorporate then into your to your sauce. Okay, but no oil because some people add oil and we were talking about this, but Talked about it a little bit before yes. the show. Uh, yes. it, again, uh, what you want is when the pasta comes out of the water, it's full of starch, and that's the opportunity where it pulls in all the sauce. Mm -hmm. If there's oil on it, it doesn't let the sauce sort of okay. penetrate your Makes pasta. Sense. Right, because what we're going to be doing up after the break, you're actually going to be adding the pasta to your sauce, which a lot of people take their pasta out, they drain all the water out, put it in the bowl, and then pour the sauce on top. That's right. But I noticed chefs actually do it the other way around. That's right. A little bit of the uh, pasta we, water as well. Where did we stray from this? <laughs> I don't understand. We make up our own things. We should follow you, right? Okay, Absolutely. so we'll basically add our pasta um, and cook it up, and then we're going to come back and put it all together so you can show us how you're adding the pasta to Excellent. the water, to the sauce, to the, sauce. the water directly without draining. All right, that's what we'll do. We're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be right back. where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We're making our yummy pasta dish here at the uh, end of November. This is kind of one of those cool dishes just sort of kind of feel good, kind of cooler temperatures. It's comfort. Sit down of a big bowl of pasta and yeah. it smells amazing. So the sauce has really come together. We can see all the liquid is really starting to reduce. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, some great flavors, some wonderful smells. It's a puttanesca. Mm -hmm. um, as I had hinted before, uh, it comes from a classical background for what people had at the time, you know, mm -hmm. going through the and fridge. That's how you come up with the good stuff. Put it together. Um, we're just finishing off with my pasta noodles right now. Mm -hmm. uh, a nice salty water. And what we'll do is we'll bring the pasta from the bowl right into the pan itself. Okay. And just um, without rinsing the pasta, like I said, I don't want to get rid of any of the starches because the starches is really what hold uh, mm -hmm. the pasta sauce mm -hmm. um, to the noodles. So okay. yeah. So basically by doing this, by using tongs, you're, and again, you're still, some of that water is still going to be on there. Some of the water is still yeah. going to be in there. Not that's too much water. though, right? Nope. You don't want to have too much. There you go. Hmm. Well, wonderful. Again, just take a little bit. And the great thing about um, fresh pasta as well, it, it takes less time to cook, doesn't it? Well said. Yeah. It mm -hmm. takes a, a fraction of the time as to the dried pasta that you get. Right. Um, and just, I, it's quality. Uh, I, 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 I'm just a fan of the fresh mm -hmm, pasta. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you're in a pinch, it, it doesn't take that much to, to find it in your supermarket. Okay. But we can start to bowl this right okay. now. So again, all these flavors, again, a stronger, more intense flavored pasta because of, uh, again, the tomato paste that we have in there and the olives, olives and the and anchovies. Capers yep. and anchovies. Yeah. Yummy. Very Wonderful good. Wonderful flavors. So again, of course, you can find this recipe on our website, taragreenhouses.com, and uh, a perfect recipe that will take us all through winter. And uh, again, just yummy. Look at that. How good does Ooh. that look? I know you're a chef. You want to make it look all pretty. You need to make it look pretty. Okay. Dun-da-da-da. -da -da. Amazing. Thank go. you, Chef Ian. Looks awesome. Have yourself a good weekend.